Hey friends, it's Gloria and welcome back to another video. Today is going to be my May TBR slash pile of possibilities, which are the books that I'm intrigued to pick up in the month of May. There's a lot of things happening in May once again, and I'm not going to try to overwhelm myself. My main priority is focusing on books by Asian authors or reading Asian stories. And then I have a sprinkling of randomness throughout. So let's start with the books that I want to pick up for Asian American Heritage Month. So the first few are graphic novels. The first one is graphic. A bit of a, a chunky graphic novel. I haven't heard too many people talk about this one and I honestly don't know anything about it. The next one is American Born Chinese. This is a teen graphic novel about a young boy who is a Chinese American and feeling like an outcast and not fitting in into his school and with his friend group and stuff like that. So curious about that. Another teen graphic novel is Almost American Girl by Robin Ha. This one I saw Annie from Annie's Book Nook give five stars on Goodreads. So that intrigued me to pick it up in May. And this is all about a Korean American girl who is living in Alabama and what that experience is like. Like. A graphic novel that I honestly picked up because of the title, Odessa by Jonathan Hill. I was thinking that this was potentially about Ukraine, but actually this is a dystopian graphic novel about a Vietnamese American family or some kids that are living in a scary post-apocalyptic world. And it's set in San Francisco or a destroyed San Francisco. A little bit out of my element for sure, but honestly, I love the cover, intrigued by the title. I do like a dystopian now and again. This one I also saw Annie from Annie's Book Nook mention and that is Under the Broken Sky by Mariko Nagai. This is about a set of siblings who are orphaned. This has to do with like Japan and Soviet relations. This is a middle grade story, I think uh, on the upper end of middle grade. And I did need a book that has a directional word in the title, so under her buzzword a -thon. Coming off of middle grade March, everyone was raving about this book, all 13, The Incredible Cave Rescue of the Thai Boys Soccer Team. This is a nonfiction middle grade book that Krista from Books and Jams raved about and a bunch of other people also read because of that and we're also really loving it. I feel like I vaguely remember something about it in the news but I don't know any details and from what I've heard this is an incredible five out of five book so I'm going in with high expectations. The next two books I have as audiobooks on Libro FM. If you don't know Libro FM is an alternative to Audible where you have a monthly subscription and you get credits and you can purchase books but the main difference is, is that instead of supporting Amazon which owns Audible you are supporting a smaller company as well as independent bookstores because you can choose your bookstore that you want to purchase audiobooks from. I do have a link in my description for a referral link where you can get a free audiobook and I get a free audiobook if you use that link. I was really lucky to be accepted into the influencer program that Libro FM has to get early copies of audiobooks. They give like five choices in various genres every month and then you can pick one. Ideally you're supposed to read it early, my bad, but I saved both of these for this month because it just feels right. The first one is Peach Blossom Spring by Melissa Fu. I picked this one in February. I believe it came out in March. This book starts out in 1938 in China and follows multiple generations in this one family, obviously dealing with World War II and then the aftermath of that, all of the various implications of what it means to be Chinese immigrants living in the U.S. I haven't really heard anyone talk about it yet as a new release. And then this next one also similarly, and I picked it in March and I believe it came out in April, is Four Treasures of the Sky. And a little blurb says this is a propulsive and dazzling debut novel set against the backdrop of the Chinese Exclusion Act about a Chinese girl fighting to claim her place in the 1880s American West. It's a really interesting and unique time period and this young girl just has to deal with a lot of stuff. She's kidnapped, she's sold into a brothel, a bunch of terrible stuff. So it's probably going to be quite heavy. So again, thank you so much Libro FM for approving me for those two books and I will let you know how they go. And then I have two books left on this Asian theme because as I was looking at my TBR, I realized most of these are not books from my shelves, which I'm trying to read more of. So these next two truly are possibilities. I'm not that stoked about getting to them in May, but I might pick them up because at the rate that I'm going with reading books, who knows? <laughs> who knows what will happen? But the first one is The Sympathizer and this book won the Pulitzer Prize and a Carnegie Battle, but I've heard mixed things. So I'm really not sure. I found this one in a little free library. It has to do with a spy and I think around the time of the Vietnam War. I could be totally wrong, but I'm intrigued enough to try it. I have a feeling it might not be like my kind of book, but I do want to give it a go. And this next one I think I'm definitely going to love is A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khalid Hosseini, who's an Afghan American. He wrote Kite Runner famously. I read that last year and really loved it. And I know that this book is just as heavy, if not heavier. And a lot of people love this one even more. If I'm in the mood for something like that, this one's on my list to get to. So we'll see if it happens. 
speaking of may or may not happen, I have four books that are just kind of complete random checkouts from the library that I'm intrigued by. We'll see if I get to them. The first one, I cannot remember for the life of me who mentioned this in their anticipated reads, but this book just came out this year. This is a graphic novel all about pinball. I'm not a big like arcades person. I don't know why this book intrigued me, but for some reason it did. It is a slim little graphic novel all about the history of the pinball machine. This is a nonfiction graphic novel, which I love nonfiction graphic novels. The only experience I have with pinball is the game that was on PCs and I grew up playing a lot of computer games, including, you know, Minesweeper and Solitaire and all the other ones that were like in the PC system and pinball was one of those. So I spent a lot of time playing that. I don't think I've ever physically played on a pinball machine. Another graphic novel that I do know who put it on my radar and that is Liv's Library and the book is Ballad for Sophie. She gave this graphic novel five stars. The thing that intrigued me is that in the back of this book, there is a code that you can scan with your phone where you get the actual song that I'm sure is included in this book. You can listen to it on Spotify as you're reading it. So that's a really cool interactive and like next level element that the publishers and the creator of this book made to enhance the reading experience. Knowing nothing about this book, I just opened the flap and realized this is a dual time Timeline, historical fiction potentially some fantasy elements and like magical realism in here, but I'm intrigued. This next one would be absolutely perfect to read for Mother's Day, and that is Tough Mothers, Amazing Stories of History's Mightiest Matriarchs by Jason Porath. But basically this book is full of different women in history and what they did. Most of these are probably unknown or very rarely mentioned women in history. Very excited to learn some things. So there's like beautiful artwork and then a page or two about this person, where she lived what she did so that one will be a fun one to get to and then the last one for this random little stack is stories of the saints bold and inspiring tales of adventure grace and courage this is a stunning book like a beautiful cover but very similar to that book about mothers this is also a collection of different small short stories of people who got sainthoods so another nonfiction book about various people in history that might not be so well known, unless you're probably already familiar with church history. Almost there, my friends. I have two books left on this pile of possibilities. This next one will most likely get read, and that is Heidi. And this is a classic on my 12 classics to get to this year, so that's exciting. But I have also Buddy reading this with the lovely Mitzi from Mitzi Reads and Writes. So we are gonna read this together, and this is a lovely little children's classic. I don't know anything about the story. I'm assuming it's about a young girl living in the German mountainside. I have this lovely little illustrated edition and I think both Mitzi and I have the exact same edition of this book which is very fun. And then finally this last book on this list I'm actually so excited to pick up and that is The Unknown Beloved by Amy Harmon. This is this author's newest release that just came out like a week or two ago and I am so so thankful because I reached out to Lake Union Publishing which is the publisher of this book and they kindly sent me a copy and not just an arc but like a fully finished copy and this is my first book that I've ever received from a publisher which is like a very exciting little booktube accomplishment I guess but if you don't know Where the Lost Wander by Amy Harmon was my favorite book of last year amazing and then I recently read What the Wind Knows and this was also incredible not quite as good as this one but both of these were beautiful historical fictions and so I'm so stoked to read her newest book. She has quite an extensive backlist already in all kinds of various genres. She's definitely an author that doesn't just like stay in one lane. She kind of explores all different kinds of things, which is fun. This one I heard is a historical fiction, mystery thriller suspense slash paranormal, potentially like fantastical element to it, which that part scares me a little bit. Cause if you guys know, I'm not too big on like a random little magic happening. I should probably work through that. But for some reason, <laughs> I'm too much of a realist. Maybe that's why it bothers me. I'm like a six on the Enneagram and I'm such a realist that anything unreal <laughs> throws me off. That being said, I'm still very excited about this book. It is set in 1923 in Chicago. It follows a young woman and like a police detective and some serial killer, some murder mystery and shenanigans happening. I've heard nothing but fantastic reviews coming in about this. Thank you again to Amy Harmon for writing this book and Lake Union Publishing for sending it to me. I feel so special. So that is it my friends. Those are all the possibilities that I may or may not get to in the month of May, but I can honestly say that I'm very excited to read any of those, so we'll see. As always, please let me know if you've read any of them, heard of them, what your thoughts are, or if any of them sound interesting to you to read. Thank you so much for tuning in and all the lovely support. I appreciate you guys all so much, and I will see you guys in another book video soon. Bye! <laughs>